We have our most recent winner in the Sprint Cup Series. He took home a million dollars last Saturday night, although he told me he hadn't seen the million dollars yet. But uh, Joey Logano joins us. He's the driver of the number 22 Shell Pennzoil Ford for Team Penske. And Joey, uh, got a couple questions, but but how can you how can you capitalize off the momentum of, of winning the the All Star race? Because obviously, I would think as an athlete, winning breeds more winning. But then also for Team Penske, how big would it be uh, for you? and the organization to win the Coca-Cola 600 on uh, Memorial Day weekend? See if that other one's working. <laughs> See if that other mic's working, would you? Hang on a second here. We're trying to get this squared away. Hang on a second, Joey. Yeah. Oh, hey. There you go. Hey. hey. There you go, Joey. <laughs> Take two, Joey. What was the question? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, momentum, uh, yes, definitely gives us momentum. Um, you know, for for us and our, and our race team, the 22 team in particular, uh, going into last weekend, we we came off three crashes in a row. Um, you know, not that our confidence gets killed in those moments. I think our team's a lot stronger than that. But it is nice to break through after three tough weekends um, and be able to uh, break through and get that that victory, first victory of the year. And um, even though it's the All Star race and didn't count for points, uh, we really want to win this Coca Cola 600. Um, you know, I think it's been a long time since a Coca Cola driver has has won one of these things. So as a, a Coke family member. Uh, I want to make that happen, uh, and I feel like I got a good car so far in practice. We've only been in qualifying trim, but um, you know it's not really a whole bunch different from last weekend. Uh, so I'm really excited about it. I think we got a good piece. I think I got a piece that to uh, um, possibly compete for the pole later on tonight, and um, we'll wait and see what happens. Questions for Joey. We'll start right here with Rick, and then we'll go to Nate. Hey, Joey. Obviously, you and Brad support each other, and. It just, I guess I was thinking about what happened um, with Carl Edwards and Kyle Busch a few weeks ago in Richmond. How do, how do you strike the balance between being supportive of each other as a group all trying to get to the same place versus, by nature, you guys have to be ultra-conservative, I mean, I'm competitive to do this for a living. Racing your teammate is the hardest thing. Um, you know, the ultimate goal is racing each other for the win, right? That's what, that's what the ultimate goal is. In that situation, it's very hard to understand oh, what, what is acceptable and what is not. Um, I think Brad and I have a, a good understanding on what that is. Um, we have a great relationship, a great friendship. Um, you know, I think we, we know each other well enough to know what's acceptable and what is not. Um, you know, a lot of times you look at the big picture and a lot of things as well. You know, sometimes there's a short-term gain there for a long-term loss. So he's got to yeah look past the hood pins a little bit uh, in those situations. Not to say we're not going to race each other for the win. Of course we're going to race each other for the win. I would expect that from him, and you're, you're damn sure right. I'm going to do it too. <laughs> we're going to we're going to race for a win for sure, but we're not going to crash each other. Um, you know, and 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 what is the line? It could be different for each uh, team. You know, each each driver combination could be completely different. You know, Kyle and Carl, whatever happened after that, if that's acceptable, if it's not, um, that's something that should be discussed behind doors. Um, you know, and not have to be out for everybody. But I think um, you know, everyone has their their line in the sand, and, and where that is is sometimes uh, uh, up for negotiations and, and, and can change a lot uh, as the season goes. But I feel like in our case, Brad and I, uh, you know, we're we're going to race for wins together. We know that. We've already finished one, two, twice this year. So we're going to be in that situation, and, and I feel like we have a good understanding where that is. We'll go to Nate, then we'll come over to Kelly. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Joey, there's been uh, some ideas floated about ways to incentivize the All-Star race, and one of those has been maybe tying 
an all-star race win to a chase berth. Do you think that is something that might have merit? And would you trade your $1 million for a guaranteed spot in the chase right now? <laughs> oh, it's not my million dollars for one. But, <laughs> but two, um, um, would I trade it? Uh, I don't know. I, I choose both. <laughs> Can I do that? That's, a, that's my typical answer. I want it all. Um, you know, I don't know if you need to incentivize something more than throwing a million dollars out in front of a driver. I mean, I don't know. It's enough to make me race. Apparently, it's enough to make Kyle Larson late race and the rest of us out there the other night to race hard. I think that was enough. I don't know if we need to throw more in it. Um, as the winner of the All-Star race, hey, yeah, of course, I'm going to say I'd rather have some points for it. Yeah, it'd be nice to have both. But it's the all-star race that's what it's all about it's supposed to be not for points it's not supposed to be for for anything else besides a million dollars that's all anyone talks about last week is that's that's what it's all about it's all about the big check at the end nothing else means anything and i don't see why we need to change that uh, may, maybe you guys have different opinions i don't know i've been kind of out of the loop so i don't know but i thought i thought it was uh, pretty good for the last i don't know how many years i've had that race but it seems like everyone's always raced hard in it uh, and had that nothing to lose mentality over here to Kelly. Thanks, Kelly Bardick, WCCB Charlotte. You talked about momentum. How um, has your confidence grown? I mean, you won the last two cup races here, if you include the All-Star Race and the 500. Yeah, this is, um, it's become one of our best racetracks for sure. You know, anytime you go to the racetrack in the last two races you've run, you've won. Uh, that makes you feel good. <laughs> Obviously gives you a lot of confidence going into the race. Um, you know, but this track changes so much. Um, obviously we've gone through, uh, this will be the third different rules package in the last three races here. Um, if you look at what happened here in, in last fall to the all-star race to, to now, it's three different packages uh, from the rules standpoint. So, um, you know, it takes something different every time. Uh, but I think the one thing that's consistent is that, that feel inside the race car you need to have and being able to communicate that to your crew chief. And uh, Todd really understands what that is. And we're able to talk about that and be able to uh, make sure we have it in our car. That's the hard part is making sure you get that feel in the car because what worked last week probably isn't going to work as well. Or I mean, you can have a direction on things, but it it's probably going to take something a little bit different to make the car work this week because things are going to be a little bit different. Raise your hand right here. We've got the affiliate right there. Raise your hand. See, see him, Jana. And then we'll come back over here to Tom Jensen. Hey, Joey. Logan Sherrill, Fox 46 Charlotte. Can you just speak on the importance of the name that's going to be on your windshield on Sunday? Yeah, I think when you look at um, you know everybody, uh, everyone's cars have a, a fallen soldier. On their, on their windshield. That's something uh, I think is a great idea uh, from the NASCAR side, from the teams working with them. Um, you know, uh, there's no telling um, what uh, that individual has gone through, but there's no telling what that family is going through either. Um, and I think this is a, a great way to honor. Um, you know, our soldiers that are out there fighting for our freedom. And this weekend, obviously, is a, one of the most important weekends for that. And I think the racetrack also does a great job uh, here. Every time we, we race here on Memorial Day weekend, uh, before the race, there's always, I don't know what's going on, because usually we're in a driver's meeting, but I always hear stuff shooting and things going to helicopters, and there's always something big going on. <laughs> I know that. Um, and, I, and I think that that service is definitely very special um, to be able to say thank you. You know, that's what this weekend's all about, is saying thank you to um, all our, our veterans and our, and our currents uh, in the military right now and that's uh, I don't think any of us can or maybe some of you've been in the military before and if so thank you but I don't think any of us that have not been in it can ever understand uh, I know I don't um, I try to hear their stories and I can't fathom them it just doesn't make sense to me it's amazing how they can uh, do what they do so uh, it's, it's only right that we can shake their hand and say thank you or put a name on a race car right here Tom Hi, Joey. Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com. Best weekend in racing of the year. Do you watch Monaco or uh, the Indy 500 before this race? And do you wish you could also race in one of those? I really like the Coca-Cola 600. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I'm so focused in on it, I don't really watch anything else. Um, you know, yes, I'll, I'll kind of flip through the, the Indy 500 uh, throughout the day periodically, but not um, not very often. I'm not as focused in on that. I, I, got a, I got a race of our own that we have to, to worry about. But as a Team Penske driver, obviously we have a lot to root for uh, of an Indy um, at the Indy 500. So, um, But what a cool race weekend. You know what I mean? When you think about those, the three big races and, and this being one of our crown jewel events, I, I believe it is at least. And, um, you know, I think that's a, 
it's just a cool race weekend for a race fan. You know, you can watch three huge races um, and where there's a lot on the line, and it's pretty fun to be a part of that. Let's go right in the middle to Dave. Uh, Dave Exum, Independent Tribune. Joey, could you uh, talk about Chase Elliott and kind of like, if you had advice for him, what would it be? And you know, can you just kind of like briefly compare your rookie year to what he's going through? This is a lot better than my rookie year, <laughs> so that's what I figured out so far. Uh, Chase has done a great job. He's, he's had some, a little more experience than I did coming into the Cup Series, um, but he's still young, obviously, and um, you know he's a uh, he's a hard worker, and that's something I appreciate about him. You know, as someone coming in, obviously has a, a great opportunity. Um, you know, and has a lot of uh, people behind him supporting him. Uh, you can go down the wrong road in a heartbeat uh, and believe you're larger than life and believe you're better than everybody. Um, he doesn't seem to have that attitude, which is pretty cool, um, which it must mean he's raised well. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he seems like he works at it really hard. He seems to be a student of sport. And I think that's pretty cool to see. Um, I went to lunch with him uh, before the season started, and he picked my brain for a while. and. Kind of wishing I didn't tell him much. <laughs> I'm having the race them already. So, uh, but it's cool to see the young guys come into the sport. That's something fun for me. I was, uh, for the longest time, I was the only young guy in the sport, you know, and, and you're, you're kind of on your own. So uh, it, it's kind of neat. I was talking to Kyle Larson uh, after the race last week. I said, it's fun, you know, that the, the young guys are out there racing for the win like that. That's, uh, that's what it's all about. You know, it's fun to see that the sport kind of transitioning like that. And um, you know, not to say the guys that have been in it are, are very tough and obviously are always up there, and, but it's cool to kind of see a new mix kind of coming in a little bit. We'll go to Woody, and then we'll end with uh, David Scott. Uh, Woody came with MRN. Joey, over to your left. Uh, just curious about the new rules package that was announced that you're going to run a couple of times this year and, and look forward to next year. How much different is that going to be for you guys at Michigan where you did the high drag package a year ago? Oh, <laughs> different compared to the high drag package, but directionally correct if you ask me. Um, you know, I think any time we take downforce off the cars, I think we've seen it's a win. It, you know, I talked in here uh, the other night after we won, and, and uh, you know, yeah, you get, everyone wants to talk about the format. I want to talk about what was amazing that night, which was the, the, the ability to race. You know, we were able to move up the racetrack and get to the outside of cars and, and, and to the bottom and race each other and pass each other. And if you looked at a year ago at the All-Star Race, we couldn't even get near each other. Uh, Michigan is going to be that times 10. We, with that high drag package, we all learned not the way to go. That was wrong. <laughs> we figured that out. We learned it. We learned our lesson. We're going to go back with something 180 degrees the other way. Uh, that's completely different, uh, and we're going to, you know, be even better than than I think the package we have now that we're racing with the small sport that we got now. We were going to make it, the hole in the air even smaller uh, and less aero dependent, which um, in theory should make it even more better racing and more better racing. It'll be more better. So <laughs> I think that'll be uh, something um, exciting to see uh, and be able to get off the throttle. At Michigan, you know, there's there's the times, you know, there's just you're wide open going so fast. And from what I hear from the drivers that are up there, I wasn't there. But from what I hear, they're out of the gas quite a bit. And, uh, you know, still going really fast at the end of the straightaway. Top speeds are going to be fast for sure. But there's that, that acceleration and needing to lift. And that's going to create uh, passing out there. Final question, David Scott. David Scott from the Charlotte Observer. Joey, can you talk about the relationship you have with the IndyCar drivers um, with Penske? I'll you all being under the same roof up there, especially this time of year, and and maybe guys like Simon and Will who live in the Charlotte area too, and maybe what what it's like for them to be here in NASCAR country. <laughs> um, you know, we, we do do quite a bit of things together. Um, you know, as a Team Penske teammates, um, even though it's a completely different series, but the shop's still connected to our shop. You know, the, the, the NASCAR shop's connected to the Indy shop, and a lot of the resources are shared. Um, you know, so we talk a lot. Obviously, I, I know Juan pretty well from when he was over here, and uh, and then been able to build a relationship with Simon and, and Will and, um, and Elio. Elio, <laughs> I don't know how anyone can't get along with Elio. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there are a lot of um, interesting personalities because um, none of them are from 
from here. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, trying to um, figure out what they're saying with their accents a lot of times is really hard for me <laughs> to understand what they're saying. But we have fun. There's a lot of, uh, like I said, fun personalities to be around. And um, and, and it makes it the, the Indy 500 more enjoyable for me uh, to be able to watch it because you, know, you have those relationships with those guys. And, and obviously, uh, success over there a lot of times helps the NASCAR side. You know, that momentum, we talk about momentum in, in general. Well, that's another avenue we can uh, you know, get more momentum. Well, Joey, thank you very much for coming in, and good luck to you and Team Penske this weekend.